Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of our weekly videos. This is for our first time home buyers. So, this is our Southern California first time home buyer market update for February 12th, 2021. Wow, that's almost a tongue twister. I had a client signing loan documents today. They kept transposing the numbers back and forth. It's even hard to write. Anyhow, um, not clickbait in our little description here. I do think we're seeing some changes a little bit. If you watch our regular uh, whole market video, we kind of alluded to some things, maybe, dare I say, loosening up for home buyers a little bit. And if you're watching this video, you are definitely uh, a home buyer, right? And, and what you're hoping for is news that things are getting better. So we're gonna jump into the stats. And then at the end, I'm gonna kind of talk about how to use this data in sort of a real life context. How do you use this information to your advantage when you're actually in the market. So we will go over that at the end. Um, so without further ado, here are our stats. Let me pull these up here. So this is our closed prices. And again, I have to give people a little bit of a word of caution. This data is based on a month ago now. Um, I do expect to see these numbers start to go up. I feel like our market is very strong and that our closed prices are gonna start edging upward probably next week to some degree. Um, I think we're going to see that. If you look here, it's it's down slightly for both of our uh, entry-level single-family home. We're down 10,000 or about 1.5% and about 2% here on our condo market. But you know, understand this data is 30 to 45 days old because it is closed prices and do expect to see these numbers change a little bit in the next coming weeks. Using that data, though, if we're going by prices, you know, and, and when we talk about prices in terms of a payment, um, even if those numbers were raised, I think it's important, again, to have this reference point, and that is our 2018 numbers here. As you can see, if you're looking at a condo, you are nearly $250 less a month. Even if these prices were are a little bit higher, you're still $200 a month cheaper than you would have been over two years ago. I think that's pretty incredible. If you look here, even for a single family, you are cheaper than you would have been in 2018. And, and I think that's really sort of kind of the mark. And when we look at these numbers, right, I think what's important to look at in, in the absolute sense of these numbers, these are based on 5% down. They include mortgage insurance, property taxes, homeowners insurance estimates, et cetera. This is a what we call a total housing payment um, in sort of the mortgage parlance. Uh, based on that 5% down. Admittedly, it is for a very well-qualified, high credit score uh, buyer, somebody in the mid to high 700s. But looking at that, I, I think it's interesting to see that these median prices, right, this 620 or 432, this is where those payments equate to, just to give you a little bit of a reference point of the market. Um, and just to kind of for a second, give people a quick primer, since people are always asking me about this, they say, well, what do you need to qualify for a home loan, you know? Um, generally, the lenders are looking that your total housing payment and debts does not exceed 50% of your gross monthly income. So jumping back in here, if we were to take a look at these numbers, this $3,450 a month means really, uh, if you have no other debts, that lender is looking for your income to be at least $7,000 a month. And down here, they're looking at least fifty two. dollars uh, 53, $5,500 a month. Now, if we go forward to this, this is exactly where these numbers kind of fall into, right? Uh, $7,000 a month would be $84,000. And, um, you know, $52, $5,300 a month is $65,000 a year. So this is how we calculate our minimum household income with no other debts in order to qualify for these entry level properties. Again, these are well qualified uh, home buyers with credit scores in the mid to upper 700s. This is some. This is our graph where we like to reconcile supply and demand. And I think, you know, if you're trying to see, if you're trying to look at the market, right, and you're trying to get an idea of how are new listings keeping up with buyers, I think this is really interesting to look at. And we're going to see this shape repeated a little bit. So if we go back here, maybe the last four weeks, right? We had these numbers, they were about in the high 80s. Then you saw 
entry level single family homes jumped into the high 90s, right? I mean, that pretty much means we are just burning through inventory. Every home that comes on the market, um, you know, for every home that comes on the market, there was a buyer taking something off the market. Uh, when you see that 97%, um, I've kind of talked very loosely in the past, anything over 90% is a hyper market. Anything over 80% is a very strong seller's market. Anything over 70 is still a seller's market. And then we kind of go down from there. But you look at something interesting happened between last week and this week. You see that our entry level single family homes, which is in the blue here, that actually dropped, right? Things got better for you. If you are a single family home buyer, things got better. But look what happened with condos. The condo market has actually been heating up. Very interesting. And I have a couple ideas on why that might be happening and what we might be seeing with that. So I'll talk about that towards the end. Uh, but as you can see, it actually things, things have gotten a little bit better. We are still in a hyper competitive market, just not quite as hyper competitive. If you look at our total inventory here, and, and we're going to talk about our availability of housing. You know, when you look at this, I think this is really an interesting chart and it describes why it is why it's so difficult out there right now if you're a home buyer. This is our inventory back in September, around 1,750 houses, either entry level single families or condos, I think it was about 1,800. It rose a little bit as we went into uh, November. Then, I mean, these inventories just plummeted towards the end of the year. That is perfectly normal, it's very common. And then they did the little hockey stick thing here where they came up and then they just stunted. And if you look, it's remarkable um, how sort of flat the condo one is. We see a little bit more variation. Things got a little bit better, a little bit worse between last week and this week for our total inventory. Um, but, you know, it's really interesting to look at this and sort of watch how flat these curves have been for total inventory in the beginning of the year. I've never seen an inventory market like this before where we just, we just don't have that inventory growing as we head into spring. You know, the sun's out. People aren't thinking about the holidays anymore. Normally, this is where the home buyers, you know, we see this crescendo of new homes coming into the market. And while we're seeing that, the problem is, you know, we're also seeing buyers, you know, it, it's not, we're not seeing that big spring bump of inventory uh, like we normally do. And so it, this is the reason why things are so difficult out there if you are a home buyer. Now, this is one that shows maybe a little bit of signs of, of trouble. And, and I'm going to tell you why. So if we compare this, and, and I think it's fascinating to compare the markets, right, between these single family homes and the condo markets, we talk about these, I'm gonna go off screen share for a second. We talk about our condo and our single family home markets, our entry level markets as if they are completely separate markets. And while they oftentimes move in different directions, they are not completely isolated markets, right? There's a point where if condos start getting too expensive, People are going to spring the extra money. They're going to get a single family home. But likewise, there's another effect that I think is happening. And, you know, one of the things we've talked about is just that there's no inventory. There's no inventory. There's no inventory. I think I've been saying it. Everybody else has been saying it. It's pretty factually true. There's very little inventory in our market. And what does that mean for single family home buyers on the entry level who keep missing out on houses, right? what are those buyers going to do if there's just nothing for them to buy? They keep writing offers. Maybe they're a 3% down buyer. Maybe they're a VA buyer. You know, they may be in a difficult position to get their offers accepted. They might want to be in a particular area that's hot, et cetera. What are they going to do after the 10th offer and the 10th house they don't get? And they notice that there's a lot more condos on the market. Well, some of those buyers are inevitably going to start looking at condos. And I think that is exactly what's happening and why we are watching our single family home market is, is fairly steady. And yet we are seeing the condo market start to tighten up. And so let's go back to this graph and I can show you what I mean by that. You know, we've historically had a pretty strong spread in inventory, right? Like this is our week supply of homes and our red line is condo. See, we had about eight weeks, it jumped to over 10 weeks at the peak, right? And here we are down here where single family homes are always approximately, you know, they're always a little bit, a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more maybe than half the double. And then look what happened when we went into the new year. Um, 
boy, that condo inventory started diving. And look what's happening now. That condo inventory is still diving while our week supply has actually bottomed out and seems to be pretty steady, right? I mean, 2.83 weeks, 2.76 weeks, 2.74 weeks, right? I mean, these are, these are very steady numbers, but look what's happening. That condo market is starting to tighten and look at this spread. Now we are, now we are less than two times different uh, between these. And it's still, these are still getting closer and closer together. And I think what's happening is some of these single family home buyers are getting frustrated in the market and they are starting to take a look at condos instead of single family homes. Um, you know, and if you're, if you're a single family home buyer, this is actually good news for you. And the reason why it's good news is it because that's one fewer buyer that you're competing against for single family homes. But it also means, you know, and the other effect that I think is happening is this. Let me go back to the beginning um, just for a second and then I'll come back here. Look at this on our total monthly payment, right? If you look here and I'm sorry, it didn't cut off. We're like 3,600 bucks. As a percentage, condos have remained a bit cheaper than single family homes. And I think people are finally starting to take a little bit of notice of that. And I think we will eventually see these will start to come towards these 2018 prices kind of as the, the single family homes have. We're going to see there's less of a difference between 2018 and today for both the single family homes and the condos. So back to our week supply of homes here. You know, this is a tightening in the condo market that I, that I think we didn't expect. All of last year, we were in the sevens pretty much for weeks of inventory on condos. And now suddenly we are in the fives and in the fours. I, I just wouldn't have really anticipated that though. In hindsight, it's fairly obvious. If you have a bunch of buyers and there's nothing for them to buy in the single family home market, they're gonna start buying condos because that's what's available to them. So condos are still way more available than single family homes, but that gap is narrowing. So our final graph is this one, and this is our 14 day still active percentage, right? And I think this tells another little bit um, you know, of a story, right? Look at these last couple of weeks. So if we're looking at this, look at what's happened to our entry level single family home. This is our 14 day still active percentage. So what it means is we look at all the homes that came on the market in the last 14 days and we say, how many of those could you still buy today of the last 14 days? And what we see is that we're seeing an uptick in our single family market. That means inventory is at least starting to accelerate. And I think that market is getting a little bit easier, right? It's getting a little bit easier. But if we look here on our condo market, that market is actually holding steady and maybe getting ever so slightly tighter. I think we're definitely seeing that shift between single family and condos. I'm really curious to see, does that shift continue? And if it does, do we see condo prices run to catch up so that those monthly payments get closer together? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen in that. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, actually, you know, let me make sure. I think that was our last slide, but now I can't remember. So yes, I am not going crazy. All right. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is how to use this data in a real life context. And I will give you a very, very good example. You know, if you watch our regular video, you will notice that on average, homes are going for over their list price. I think that is especially true in the entry level market. So a real question that arises is, if you go and you see a single family home at $625,000, what price do you offer? Well, that really depends on a lot of factors, but probably the biggest one is, you're asking yourself this question, how hot is the market right now? How busy is this market? How aggressive do I have to be? And so right now, I will tell you, if you've been looking at condos and you, you haven't really found anything, understand you're going to have to be more aggressive than you previously have been. If you've been looking at single family homes and you've been, you think fairly aggressive, but not aggressive enough to, to, win, to win the listing, you will have to remain that aggressive, but your chances are getting better rather than worse, that what you're doing will be enough to get that home. So it's really important to sort of understand sort of how these winds of change can kind of shift directions a little bit and also kind of shift in velocity. I'm really hoping that what we're finally seeing is that that entry level single family market is gonna ease a little bit 
but I don't know how much it's going to ease. So, so you have to understand it is still a very competitive market. Easing slightly is not the same as easy. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching our video this week. Uh, we love you. We love comments. We love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you are watching on YouTube. And we will see you again next week for a whole market update, which I highly recommend that you watch as well. We dive into just a little bit more detail on things, but it's a view of the whole market, not just entry-level homes. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. Happy Friday. Happy house hunting. We will talk to you soon. If there's anything we can do for you, don't be afraid to reach out.